Right. So I I don't think that any of us here are old enough uh, to have watched um, Outlaw Star back when it aired on Toonami. Um, so when did you uh, guys found uh, out? Uh, um, I find think out? technically I might have been, but I'm not from America, so... Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, I've always known about Outlaw Star. I feel like it's a pretty well-known show. It, it's one of those late 90s. It's often compared to Cowboy Bebop. It's another space western. Or like, Trigun. Or Trigun. It's yeah. in the vibe. Like, if, if you know anything about 90s anime, you know you've heard the name Outlaw Star. Yeah, yeah. Usually what they say is that uh, it, it, people's criticism against uh, Outlaw Star is that it is not Cowboy Bebop, basically. <laughs> yeah. Does it, does it have to be? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, does it have to be? Let, well, let, here's the... Uh... I'll, I'll answer that. Here's the main difference. Outlaw Star is basically a space western about a bunch of delinquents joining in and defeating space pirates. Cowboy Bebop is basically, it has a bunch of delinquents, but for the most part, it's like taking every western uh, film and just kind of piecing it as its own episode. Yeah, and like Cowboy Bebop is more like noir with its jazz and shit like that and just like atmosphere and tone. Well, like, I mean, Outlaw Star is a bit more lighthearted. I mean, it does have serious shit, but, like, it's a lot more lighthearted and a bit more fan service -y. Yeah, com like, message-wise, Bebop basically ends on a tone of the eternal loneliness of modernity, really, uh, and the way people are, are fated to drift away. And you have basically the exact inverse as the ending of Outlaw Star, where uh, the whole gang staying together. Spoilers, but it's not much of a spoiler. Yeah. Another criticism which I've heard is that uh, Gene can solve every, every one of his problems with his magic gun. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's no attention or anything? No. You don't buy that. Okay. So you pay too much attention to schizo ramblings you find on the internet. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I would say for some of the conflicts, like, it does come down a little bit to a magic gun, but most of them, like, you don't even use the magic gun, like, that time he gets attacked by that, that fucking assassin in that door, and he's, like, scared shitless, because, like, here's the thing about that magic gun, it has limited ammunition, and that's why he doesn't use it, unless he really has to fucking use it. Right, right. Um, okay, so what is the story about um, Albania men? Well, the general sense of it is... Basically, Gene and I think his name is James, they're both partners who perform various tasks. And so <clears throat> they meet up with Hilda, who basically is other, ch well, she has fallen. They, they don't meet up with her. They rather get wrapped into her whole scenario. Yeah they, get yeah, they get shanghaied into her bullshit and they're like, well, I guess we're in for the long haul. Yeah, literally, yeah. they they had a bounty on her. They attempt to go after her, and then they and then as they have her at gunpoint, she unveils some stuff and she says, "Well, there's a bunch of pirates after me, and they know you know too much now, so uh, you're just as dead to them as uh, as they want me dead." They're like, "Shit!" Well, how did we that get is, in that part into is this? true, but. Uh... Here's the here's the part that happens. So she gets a di she gets an identity as somewhat different and she says, Oh, I need someone who's a bodyguard. Oh, that's right, yeah. And so they get chased by pirates and this whole series becomes a long way of Gene basically growing up and trying to, you know, get over his a space fear and getting revenge against the uh, things that he's McDougal for killing his dad. Mm. Right. Gene, that may be the um, most important day of your life, but for me, it was only Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the, the McDougal uh, brothers uh, are absent from the manga, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, the manga is very different, as we talked about before recording. Yeah, because, um, like, from what I looked on it, like, the manga's a lot shorter and a lot more, like, fan service heavier. Like, the, the, the anime compared to the manga is way toned down. Yeah. So the first yeah, the, episode, uh, episodes focus on basically the characters and Hilda showing them the ropes and a bunch of pirates on their tail. And 
I don't know how about you guys felt. I felt this was actually the weakest part of the show for the most part. They haven't quite hit the established formula yet where you've got the cast of characters. Uh, Hilda, to me, basically just sort of like the big sister Onechan archetype. I don't mean like in terms of like in terms of, oh, she's a big sister, but in terms of like she's the one looking after those two a little, but and trying to show them the ropes, but I, I don't know. The first episodes feel like they just sort of are all the same premise of them being on the run, and I'm never that impressed. And this is a general running thing throughout the the show. The main uh, pirate band, I was never very impressed by. I thought they were just kind of boring. Boring, very boring. To be honest. Yeah, it, it doesn't help that like Jean's like like killing them like I don't know like three to one, two to one, five to one, ten to one per engagement. Like they're like aside from like some of the assassins, like the the general K parts don't really feel much of a threat. No, no. E- even though like in the first episodes they are theoretically the primary threat and theoretically totally outgunned by, but you never you never quite get that feeling. So that leaves something of Rocky start, but the show already has a lot of personality. Uh, The character designs are excellent. Gene and and his uh, little buddy uh, have a very good dynamic together. And then they start slowly introducing the new characters. You've got the Katal, the cat girl, you've got the samurai, you've got all sorts of things. You've you've got Melfina, she's introduced from the start. She is basically some sort of android girl, uh, who, and she is the one who has to, uh, that powers the ship. And she is a character who, at the start, is just sort of nice, kind, uh, doesn't really have too much plot relevance. Uh, even though Hilda is like, this is the most powerful character, but she's, it's like, oh, okay, she's just a device in order to get, like, uh, this, uh, this ship running. Okay. No, no oh, yeah, you forgot it. that, you forgot that the ship itself is also a character. Like, it has its own oh, personality, yes. too. Oh yeah, yeah. The the ship Nava computer is sarcastic and it's like, Oh Gene, why are you doing this? Why are you trying I, to do I, I, I love how the ship itself is also its own character. Like it's like, No, Gene, why are you doing this? No, Gene, that's crazy. Gene, are you retarded, Gene? <laughs> it's great. No, I, he, I love he's it. he's just sort of resigned to everything that they're going to I'm do. I'm surrounded by I'm being piloted by idiots and suicidal madmen. God. One of the things which Hilda does uh, at the start, though, is try to uh, introduce the characters and ask to uh, the different factions. So she explains that uh, the three powers in this universe are uh, the pirates, um, the outlaws, and the space forces. We don't see much of the space forces in this series, though, there's a, a spin-off of uh, Outlaw Star called Angel Links, which is all about the Space Force. Yeah, I, I linked with uh, the Reculous. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we get a full episode devoted to the Space Forces, so it's not like there's that, nothing that, there. Um, but uh, they're yeah, not the also, real if Space I remember Force. Corre- and if I remember correctly, um, where they are, at least in the, the world map, right, they're kind of in Cape... They're in Cape Pirate, kind of, like, Outlaw territory, right? And then they're on the the frontier when it comes to later episodes they're not really in you know space force like territory quote unquote yeah, the space force that we do see are not the quote unquote a real space force but a but a private space force or something that's what they said anyway um that's why there, there was the whole thing about uh, the lizard men you know making it uh, wanting them to be taken seriously uh, Anyway, uh, do you think that they did a good job of um, introducing, explaining what's going on? And um, I guess throughout the series, yeah. do you think that, yeah. Yeah, and I think it was fine. Is, is, yeah. It was, is there any, uh, what's the difference between a pirate and, and, and an outlaw? I kind of viewed the outlaws as more like kind of mercenary types. Like they're not exactly like, 
Like, the K pirates are kind of like criminal shit. The mercenary, um, the outlaws are kind of like a bit more of a gray area. Like, if I was to use like a D&D analogy, pirates are typically evil, outlaws are more like neutral aligned, and the space forces are more like, I guess you could say like good aligned or more lawful aligned, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so, so, uh, because at first it seemed to me that um, it, it was just that the pirates were more organized, but it seems like, um, but basically, uh, the outlaws uh, are not always against the law, whereas the pirates are always uh, against the law, I guess, unlawful or whatever. Um, okay. I mean, if you look at Gene, I mean, he's literally like, you know, the lovable rogue archetype. Like, yeah, he he, he breaks the law when it's giving in to him, but he's not like amoral. He's not like, oh, yeah, I'm going to shoot up like a school bus with a bunch of kids and like flip dumpsters and shit, you know. He's not like some yeah. insane bloodthirsty maniac. Yeah, the show is trying to have a running theme of uh, Gene having to grow up a little, of him having to swap from adolescence into adulthood. Uh, do you ever feel like that was hugely important, or that, uh, I, I guess for me, it sort of felt like it was a theme that was talked about and not always displayed? Um, well, I mean... I, I, I can a... see what they're... Tw- oh, sorry, you go first. I was going to say, they did display the whole interaction between uh, Hilda and Jean, especially the last moment where Hilda's just like, quit being, quit being a fucking pussy, Jean. You gotta mm. fly this fucking spaceship. Yeah, and just to add on to that, like, as the show goes on, he becomes a lot more, I guess you say, responsible. I mean, he's still the lovable rogue, but he isn't, like, just gung-ho all the time. I mean, I'm, um, like, 100% like gung-ho. And there's also like these like, like these kind of weird episodes, right, where he's kind of brooding as as well. Like you do notice these weird episodes where he's just kind of brooding as well. Like he does that a lot more as the show goes on. Like he's kind of like seriously thinking about shit because shit's kind of ho- like shit sh- like shit's getting quite intense. He's just like, yeah, I can't laugh my way. You know, I can't like you know be a kid anymore. Like I got to fucking man up. Yeah, there is the episode where he gets challenged to a duel, and. Uh, and he he just can't sleep for like the rest of the day, he, and he is just uh, and, and he is totally consumed by that, understandably, for the rest of that episode. Yes, a lot of people like to talk about uh, you know that moment when um, Melfina tries to come to uh, comfort him while he's sleeping, and he uh, he tries to grab her, but then. Uh, she rejects him. Uh, do you think that scene had any... Um, what, what significance do you think that scene had, if any? I think the significance is... Um, how, how would I describe it? It is established that, like, Gene, as a character, like, he, he, he he's engaging in prostitution. Like, he he is engaging in a lot of casual sex. Quite a lot. Yeah. And, yeah, he, he, he he's a bit of a lecher. But, you know... Like, it's kind of like, I think the significance of it is that, like, he, 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 like, he's used to, like, you know, because he's a good looking guy in show, right? He's a good looking guy. He's strong. He's tough. You know, he's got all things working for him, right? And, like, he does that. He, re- like, she rejects him. And he's, like, wheels back because it's, like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. And I think it's also because, he, like, he's not doing it for fun. He's just doing it because, like, oh, I'm stressed. I'm going to do this. I, th- I think it's just part of his, like, character development to realize that, like, yeah, that shit that he's doing doesn't work all the goddamn time. And as the show goes on, he actually does that less. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that episode was a, a little bit cheap on, though, when, you know, all the friends come to help him and then they fake die from death, but none of them are actually dead anyway later on. Um, and then at the end, it turns out even uh, the guy that they, they had told, told that they had killed uh, <laughs> wasn't dead either. Um, well, one of them whom they had killed there. But it, overall, it was a nice episode. Um, Jim also... Yeah, it's Jim a good... Jim. Like, that, like that, that scene was a nice touch, at least. Like, the kind of show that, like, you know, he isn't kind of in it. A uh, big scene. Well, the scene we just talked about, you know, like, you know, Melina tries to comfort him and he tries to grab her and shit like that. Like, I think that scene just kind of indicates that, like, you know, like, he's he's going in a funk right now. Yeah. Um, Jim or James also had a, I guess... Dark episode, if you want to put it that way. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, J- Jim's usually along for the ride. Jim is always like, uh, he's trying to be the sensible one to Gene's antics and trying to keep him 
little more level-headed. Ah, oh, Gene, maybe let's not take uh, the the ten million Wulong uh, or or what, whatever bounty uh, that has us going up against the best space pirate in the galaxy. Let's not do that. Let's maybe do something in the middle. Gene's like, nah. No, Gene, we're not going to infiltrate a nuclear power plant, st steal nukes, and sell them for a thousand Wulong apiece. No, Gene, you can't do this. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, like, him and the ship are literally like Gene's Jiminy Cricket, like, no, we're not stealing nuclear missiles. No, I don't care how awesome it is. No, no, no wahoo. <laughs> a lot of the time, it, it, it's also the other way around. Like, there's jobs available, but uh, they're not good enough for Gene. Um, and... Too low yeah. risk, man. Yeah. Listen, he's got a little um, on the edge. Yeah, but then uh, he gets uh, hypnotized by a cactus, uh, higher living form, or whatever, whatever it was. That was a bit funny, uh, the way that he died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was talking about uh, the episode where Jim goes on a date. Uh, he meets. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah his first crush. Yeah, yeah, he you got him. Yeah, and it turns out it's a little K pirate uh, who they eventually kill in combat, and they are none the wiser. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, we could go over, like, a zillion different episodes uh, in here. This is one of those shows where it's the 90s old standby of each, it's an episode episodic show where it's really devoted to episodic storytelling and each story tries to be a little self-contained and, and so you've got ones like that you've got uh, uh ones where Melfina goes through an existential crisis which is honestly one of the best ones you've got ones where you know uh, they're on the hunt for some uh, where you have like Basically, almost a retelling of Moby Dick. Also, yeah, that was a uh, funny episode. Like, I think he and even you... calls. It, I think he even calls yeah. it White Whale or something. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's an episode where they we have a, a space race. Uh, there's another where they, uh, they there's there's a prison break. There's um, oh yeah, uh, oh, the, the prison break episode was pretty fun. Yeah, the prison break is a really interesting uh, design one because. Gene has to go in there to break someone out for the job. And this prison is one of those, like, most maximum security enjoys torturing inmates almost prison. Because... Yeah, there's, just... like, high gra And it's also got, like, high gravity, so you move around really fucking slow. Yeah, it's like, it's a constant wear and tear on your strains. And it's like, oh, you got out? We're throwing you in the fucking 8G segment and it's like good luck not fucking dying yeah, yeah it yeah, reminds me uh, of the episode of like dragon ball where like goku's training in like 100 times gravity and he gets like stronger it reminds me of that yes i, I, th I think uh, they said that uh, it, it was a 3g and most of the inmates uh end up dying due to harsh failure before their sentences um are up um and the prison warden is like this fat creature, fat little man. Uh, yeah, in, little in a, goblin. Yes, floating inside um, some liquid so that uh, he's not affected by um, the gravity um, with cables connected to him to control. Um, the robots. Uh, yeah, robots which, which, actually, which actually do the work, uh, uh, the, guard, the guarding, I guess. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, uh, there's, uh, we haven't talked, uh, there's, of course, the other two m m members of the cast, there's Aisha Clan Clan, who is the cat girl, and she is, like, the cat girl archetype to a T, in, in that she, like, is constantly fighting, tomboyish, doesn't get along, has, like, the r ridiculous strength, and is constantly getting into trouble, uh... Yeah, she's a fun character. And then you Bang, have... Bang, yeah, yeah. Reign Supreme, yes, yes. Yeah, she's like... Yeah, like, her whole shtick... I, I feel like this is very emblematic of the rest of the show, is, like, she is, like, the Qatar, Qatar, uh, like, the best empire, one of the most proud empires out there, strong, honorable, and she ha has washed out of there. And she is on a desperate struggle 
to tr uh, to try to redeem her name and get reinstated as a decent officer while she uh washes dishes at various establishments looking for Jean or get, and others. Or getting uh, involved in Jean's or getting involved in Jean's es escapades, you know, where he loots a nuclear reactor, you know, the usual. Yeah, she's basically a comic relief character. And she's funny, so it's fine. You know, the Katara Katara reminds me of, like, cat girl versions of, like, the Skaven. Like, they're the best, yes, yes. Katara Katara, yes, mighty. Don't square foot, Musk. Yes, yes. I, mean, I guess that leaves... I was gonna say, it's, in a way, she's kind of, like, a more attractive Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't find the ridges on the skull attractive, Albanian? <laughs> what are you, racist? Uh... Oh, wait, this is a right-wing server, never mind. Boss. Uh, so... Yeah, it was. Exactly. Now it's uh, uh, Destroy the West server using anime. We're winning. Sorry, it, it's so yeah. fucking over. Yeah, it's all by Gundam's fault here. So that leaves us with uh, Suzuka, which I thought was kind... She was also kind of one note. Uh, I mean, she's... She is... Uh, yeah, she's basically the quiet assassin woman. Uh, they never really ended up having an episode to establish things for her yeah and like, that's an uh, issue uh, that it, comes up when it comes to like the ending where we find out she has a she has a bit of a pass of one of the k pirate assassins yeah the yeah the ending we'll get to the ending in a little bit but it's fair to say that this is a show that simply ran out of like and there's like, it slowly introduces all these character concepts that are trying to reach towards a planned conclusion. But a lot of... They don't actually have the amount of episodes in the run to develop all these things. So, like, Suzuka in particular, like, her whole backstory is, like, just dumped in the last episode. And then, oof, oof, and we're done. Uh, and, and, and it doesn't end up really delivering in any ways, but... Yeah, like, it, it, like it really, like, it doesn't feel meaningful at all. Like, the, all the shit's just dumped on your lap, and you're like, I mean, that's cool, but why the fuck should I care? Yeah. That said, uh, she, she is generally likable, uh, as being, like, she's basically the quiet assassin type who had a job against Jean, and via pretty contrived circumstances i will say uh and ends up deciding to postpone things because she respects uh, gene and his ability there's actually like she manages gene manages to outduel him which like shocks her and so she decides to start following him around as like a matter of respect but even so yeah, I, I think that kind of makes sense. Like, she, if she's kind of like this honorable assassin type, which is like, oh, this Gene guy is kind of interesting. I might, I'm gonna follow him around. Like, he's kind of fun. But Gene is still like uh, a lot. But she still always feels like the one who has her head squared on straight compared to the rest of them. Like, there's an episode where uh, Gene and Jim get like the small fry, and she brings in the big fish. Essentially, or the other episode where Jean is trying to get the thousand, ten thousand rule log for one assassin. But as it turns out, they got they attacked the android copy, and she got the actual person. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring to. Yeah, technically speaking, uh, this uh, this setting um, is in the future of another manga, which uh, the author wrote called uh, "Future Retro Hero Story," and the characters. Uh, the magicians um, in the onsen episode are actually characters from the manga that from that series. Um, oh, okay. Because yeah, because um, Jean's gun, uh, the caster is called caster because you know the the class, <laughs> um, you know, as in um, a, a magic caster. Um, yeah. Um, what did you think? Yeah, can, I, of, can I just say, uh, like the ocean, the the beat, the the beat, the uh, spring episode was probably like the best, like fan service, um, fan service episode in all of anime because it gives you like uh, not only are you entertained, it also gives you a uh, great exposition about how his fucking gun works and shit. Like you get you get entertained and information. And in the yeah. tsunami version, they actually cut this episode out, so now people are like, well, how the fuck does this gun work? Well, now you know you missed that episode. Yes, uh, and the other episode which they cut out for no, some the, reason was... The, 
yes. yeah, the 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 uh, fan service episode, which is like the last episode almost before they start to go into the finale, it is just a pitch perfect comedy episode. Yes. Like, I, I I can't praise it highly enough in terms of the way all the jokes land, in terms of Gene uh, getting to be a little bit of a rapscallion, Aisha being fucking crazy, uh, all this sort of stuff. Like, all, all the jokes really do land for that. And you have, like... And this is sort of, like, the downside, though. It is... Around, like, the episode 20 mark or so, they decide, oh, you've got the five famous assassins or whatever that are going to go after Gene. And they're seven. Big time. Seven. Seven. Okay. And one of these assassins has to show up in this episode, and he's just a joke. Like, and I like Little it. Drama. He's, he's, it's a running joke throughout the whole episode that he's, like, wily Coyote and doesn't come close to catching him, and they're just totally oblivious that this guy is after him, after them but at the same time it does speak to like some of the broader issues of the fact that this is how a character uh, these super powerful assassins are treated uh at times yeah uh, I, I was kind of expecting to like have uh I mean, there was enough time um, after they were introduced if they really wanted to, to have uh, an episode for each of the seven assassins uh, to get to know them or anything, but there, there wasn't. Um, it, it, it was just a bunch of uh, other side stories which were fun. In and of yeah, I, I, mean, the, I mean, I don't think we're going to beat either the dual one or, like, the cat assassin. I mean, I think those are, like, the really standout ones. Yeah, yeah. Um. So the set the setting uh, is, um, I guess if uh, China did space colonization or something. Um, I mean, at least... it things feel Chinese inspired in some ways. I don't know. But I mean, like that's all like set dressing at the end of the day. There's nothing like Chinese culture wise that really feels like it. it yeah, it the, the pirate. Yeah, the, the pirates use something called Tao magic, but they don't really go into much detail of how it works. Well, it's Taoism, it but... It's Taoism, but magic. You, you need to know the way of the Tao. You, but, you know, that would require you to read, so, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, obviously. It's the, the same as uh, reading uh, D&D notes. Uh, somebody's a D&D campaign note. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically it's uh, all the Chinese stuff is, is just being addressing. Um, and it looks cool, but yeah, that that's a, that's about it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, just a resurgence of Chinese pirates after you know, after the British like smashed them in like the eighteen hundreds. The Chinese are like, ah, we can finally engage in piracy again. I think there's sort of an explanation within the series that uh, an asteroid with a dr dragonite on it landed in China. It was in China that it landed. So yeah, so that's why at least this part of the universe is um, Chinese themed, part of the Chinese. I don't know, Empire, whatever, Tenpai Empire, or whatever it was called. Uh, or, well, the Frontiers, anyway. Um, what else is there to say? What did you think about the artwork and sound? I guess, yeah. What okay, think um, I think the show, like on Blu-ray, looks absolutely gorgeous, but uh, I kind of picked this up on my rewatch because I didn't notice it originally at first. But, like, the show does change, like, art style quite a bit at times, and it's a little jarring. Right. And uh, what is the explanation for that, Heraklia? Uh, like, it's literally just, like, this show, like, okay, the, this show is, this is a very good show. Like, it, it's really inspired in a lot of ways. You don't have this type of show that's made anymore. But this is, like, this is the type of show that's, like, one or two steps away from being a master. And one of the reasons for this is it's rushed, and on, on top of that, all something like a th one in every three episodes is being done by a different animation studio. Like, just flat out, they had to bring another animation studio in. And you can look on Anime News Network for Outlaw Star, and you can it'll go over, like, each episode. And this, this was the studio that was involved here. This was the studio involved here. And it's quite noticeable because... Like the the actual animation models are constantly changing, 
episode to episode. Like some of the final episodes, Jean looks totally different. Uh, and like what used to be like a rounded face all of a sudden becomes super narrow. And it looks, it, it almost looks like uh, a, a, a fan, like a fan reinterpretation or something like that. But nope, it's the exact same series. So uh, it can really be something sometimes. Yeah, and an- another issue with the show is that, like, the beginning kind of opened up, you know, this big mystery and stuff, and they don't really focus on it until, like, maybe, like, past the halfway point. And then they just kind of, like, speed run through it. Um, yes, and they speed run through it. And I don't know, I didn't find, even once they unveiled it, I didn't find it very interesting myself. No, I, I like, I was just kind of left, like, kind of bored. And it's also, like, I, I think me and you were talking about, like, in a chat before, right? But, like, this thing really needed another 12 episodes. Like, there's some plot points that are really, like, un, unfinished. Yes, yes. The The final episode, basically, the final episodes are basically a combination of unveil of the plot, uh, uh, of the running plot thing about the Galactic Ley Line, which basically just turns into an instrumentality plot, which, I mean, hey, it was an, a year after Evangelia, end of Evangelion, so it got cut him a little slack. People were enraptured by that stuff, but it was still just... and, and plus, for the 90s, it was kind of new, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time, it, it's just like, okay, and they try... And they decide not to do that, and Jean actually does admittedly have this nice declaration of love for Melfina, so that's a nice touch. It was cute. Yeah, yeah, and and the whole relationship between those two, like, Jean obviously has been the type that's able to get along with, like, the chick at the bar or something like that. He's he's got the moves, you know, he's a lovable rogue, he's got the charisma, he's got the looks, you know... He's got a kind of like, um, like he's he's got like this kind of charisma. It's not sleazy, right? But he's kind of like, uh, what's the word? I mean, sleazy is not terrible uh, description. But like Mel, every time he ends up, uh, but like this, Melfina and him slowly start to get closer over the course of the show. Now it's been a little while for me since I last watched it, but. Generally speaking, like you get the impression that he's never been with someone for a super long time or like this. But at the same time, he's a little unnerved by Melfina because he's like, you're basically an android. Like, you, you're theoretically you have some organic components, and you are. Human if I remember correctly, she's so... a bio android similar to like yeah. Harry McDougal. Like, there if i remember correctly it's like they're organic but like artificially like you know cloned and shit and they have some mechanical parts but most of it's like organic mm-hmm. yeah that and he's like were well you mechanic. programmed to to think this were you programmed to act this way like he he he, he can't quite trust her a little bit and i'm not really doing good justice to explaining just the level of his distrust and this culminates in a very nice episode where we get involved with uh these two McDougal brothers who are basically other ones that are after Melfina, after the Galactic Ley Line. Everyone's after this Galactic Ley Line, which is like the secret of how ancient aliens created like the past. Uh, created like their jump gate system, their faster than light travel, like a zillion years ago. That's what the Galactic Ley Line is. And everyone's trying to find out more about it, and the they get McDougal, uh, the McDougal brothers into that. And Melfina has this episode where she's going through an existential crisis, and it's really one of the best episodes of the show. I'd say the yes, best it episode is. of the show. And have alongside this one of the McDougal brothers who's like making his way trying to basically almost romance Melfina because he sees himself as very similar to her. There's all Yeah, he's uh, if I remember correctly, he's a very similar like artificial life form and he feels lonely. Like yes he has his brother and stuff and they do like care about each other. But at the same time, he feels that he's artificial, and then he meets someone like Malfina, who's just like him. Yeah, there's all these rape undertones to the way that he's... Undertones? Uh, talking to Malfina. 
overtones? What do you want me to Yeah, more like it? fucking overtones. Like the scientist guys is like, yes, I know you're excited with wanting to mate with her, but you re- do be aware she is a bio We don't know the f- f- we don't know the specifics of that. And he's like, no, that's fine. I'll wait for you, Malfine, as he licks his lips. I mean like undertones, dude. Like the guy is not subtle. Uh, he's and, like, Jenny, can I take your door out for a day? And Jean's like, no, shotgun blast to the face. And, and, and Melfina herself is torn because this is after her and Jean had, had a little fight. And in general, she's just sort of always been there for them in the background. And they almost treat her like, well, like she isn't. That, that, that she's just, that she doesn't need any, that she's always going to be there and that she doesn't have any particular feelings to be looked after or anything like that. And, well, it turns out she does. And the the fact that she's, like, being left behind more and more and more is starting to grate at her. And, and she does come this close to wanting to get whisked away by this McDougal brother. And that was overall a very good episode. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm even though we're making fun of him a little bit, like I do like how he tries to protect her from like the the towel pirate guy, you know, at the end. It was it was cute. He's like he was like, oh, that's adorable. Yeah. Um, I feel I, I do feel a little bad from like he gets his fucking legs and limbs like twisted and his like his fucking throat crushed. I'm like, damn. And then at the end, it turns out that there's a copy of him still alive. Uh. On the I don't stage. like that part. He should have stayed dead. Because yeah. I, I like the part where like the older brother's like, Harry, Harry, oh my god, look what he look what they fucking did to you. I'm gonna fucking kill that bastard. Like I like that scene. It was a it was a nice touch. Yeah, I mean the ending uh wasn't really logical, it was just uh rushed. Um Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, um, like this episode this show needed like a few more episodes, like maybe twelve more episodes, because it's just like, you know, because here's the thing, the McDonald brothers are still alive. Like, some of these guys are still fucking alive. Like, there's th- there's some stuff unresolved. Like, I kind of have a feeling they might have wanted to go for a second season, but didn't get the budget or support. I, like, like, I, I kind of got the impression that they might have gone for a second season. They like, could have, but it, they, it, it's very much like they would have had to come up with a new spin on thing. I mean, yeah. it is. Well, I, like, I, I kind of got the heroes. feeling that, like, maybe they wanted to go for, like, a second season, but didn't have the budget or just didn't get a lot of, like, off the ground. Because there's yeah, quite I mean, a few, like, unresolved plot points. Yeah, so honestly, rather than doing the spin-off, which they did, a sequel might have had more success. Uh, mm. Well, at least in the best. I don't know how much interest this had in Japan. Um, I mean, how many other space westerns are there anyway in anime? Not that many, I think. No. You, no. Can, you, can, count them on your ha- you can count them on your hands, essentially. But these are like the big three of the space westerns. Ah, uh, I mean, Captain Harlock in a way is a little bit of a space western, but a not really. Bit. But like, it's similar, a little bit. Like, yeah, like not like okay. This in terms of spirit, it is not in terms of like aesthetic or shit like that. Yeah, and in in terms of spirit, it's actually more similar to like an old style western than say this is. I'd say. Whereas this, uh, well, this is always a little bit like wacky hijinks ass, which is definitely not bad in any way. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Albania man, how would you rate this series? Mm, I would say I would give it eight. Well, aside from the whole uh, plot being on unres- it being rushed, it was a pretty fun show. I would say I don't know if eight's too high, but I would give it an eight. Uh, what about you, Heracles? I might give it an 8 just for the uniqueness of the show, but yeah, oh, oh, and, and like looking back on it, like there are a lot of very strong episodes where I go like, there's not too much else like this, this is really fun. But I do think you have to somewhat sit through, the, the Achilles heel of this show is you have to sit through a kind of mediocre beginning and a kind of mediocre end, and I just wish they could have, uh, like, made a few changes and improved things on that front but overall it's still quite a good show yeah yeah i mean i enjoyed the side stories like for example the one about uh, the hostage situation uh, where the terrorists turn turn out to be just uh robbers instead that was yeah that was pretty funny funny. pretty fun but i don't think you should watch this for the plot really um if you enjoy the characters, oh, just messing about doing yeah. anime hijinks. 
So let's say you watch this anime for the ride. The plot is kind of secondary to the ride. Yes, very much so. I, I, I mean, I, it's a I, very I, fun ride. You know, you got gorgeous spaceship battles, some cool gunfights, you know, magic shit going on. Like, it's a very entertaining show. Like, at least for most of the episodes, you're not really going to be bored. Yeah, there's uh, spaceships uh, which have arms on them. Uh, yeah, grappling each other. So, um, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Um, what about you, Bagand? Um, I'm going for probably a 6 to 7 out of 10. Like, it's fairly solid. I would say out of, like, the Space Western trilogy, it's probably, like, the weakest. But, saying that, like, it's still a very good show. It's a bit messy, and it does, like, at the beginning, it, it does have a little bit of, like, this identity crisis issue of, like, what it wants to be. And, like, the ending is very rushed, but outside of that, like, I think it's a very solid show, and it's pretty good. Like, it... I think it's like probably the weakest out of the space western, the, the the three big space westerns. But you know, it's like a six or seven out of ten out of shows that like you know eights or sevens. So you know, um, it's still a, a fairly decent show on its own. I'd recommend it. You know, it's a good show from the nineties. You know, and you know they don't make fun anime like this anymore. Mm. Well, honestly, at least the one thing the show does it has a lot of magic. Oh, we forgot to talk about the music. Um. The opening is great, and the second ED is fucking great. It's fucking amazing. But yeah, they don't make fucking anime like this anymore, and I wish we were back in the 90s or 80s when they made, you know, made pa- shows made of pure passion. Any idea Bring what the... Bring back cell shading animation. Yeah, it, it, it insert rant about Isekai here. Well, yeah, yeah. to be honest, I kind of like some cell shading, depending on the style of cell shading. All right. Um, yeah, so... You know, this is basically uh, a back in my day anime. <laughs> so, essentially. <laughs> back in my day, uh, Space Westerns, we could see tits and gore and guns blowing up shit like, like it was 1992. Yeah, yeah, n- none of that uh, gay, um, you know, like, we will use this theme to strategically hide the... Uh, <laughs> anyway, at the, on- at the onsen episode, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I, I was on that, point. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that this series is a harem, but uh, yeah, you know. The, yeah, the I mean, crew, I, 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 okay. It, Jean has like the bar girl and like Melina, but like in like the pros, like in the random prostitute bangs. That's more of a casual thing. Like he only really actually cares about Melina. Uh, I think the samurai chick might have a little bit of a crush on him. But yeah, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, there there is like an equal amount of time with Suzuka and Aisha, but, like, they they make it seem like something might go there, but really nothing ever develops there. And Aisha's too much of an oddball, uh, and Suzuka is, like, too professional, has her own shit to deal with. Yeah. They're more, they're more there for I, the I audience. I mean, the closest too. thing to a harem is that when, like, James goes to the Ocean episode and he's getting groomed by an A-Sons. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, th- then he gets, um, anyway. Uh, well, you yeah. know, he almost found a little girlfriend and, you know, just, she just never showed up again. It's like, you know, yep. first crushes are rough like that, you know, it's part of growing up. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, when the show got, uh, got censored by Tsunami, apparently Fred, some of Fred's actions were censored as well for some reason no I, why. I, I i like fred he's kind of funny yeah see uh, um, fashioned, well he is pretty much borderline <laughs> rapist yes and yeah. also gene sugar daddy unironically yep yeah the, the see, female what I fucking is... think about it, like yeah he's literally gene sugar daddy <laughs> unwanted right. sugar daddy yeah yeah i mean uh, gene even tried to you know prevent um uh, prevent him from getting married anyway um so uh yeah what i was going to say was that the girls are mostly there for the audience to phone over them it, it's not gene who phones over them uh he's sleazy but not desperate most of the time um i, I mean yeah I, I, I mean i mean considering his profession it makes sense you know he's like you know he, he lives life today you know he's like you know do shit now, think about it later. You know, it makes sense. Right. Um, I guess this is a show where it's appropriate to ask uh, who is best girl. Um, Melina. Kind of know who. Yeah. yeah it's Melfina. Melfina, sorry. Melfina, yeah. Melfina. Best, yes, best girl. Yes, protect her at all costs. <laughs> I couldn't remember her name. All right. 
Um, no, I'm confusing her with the chick from Escaflone. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, her character was like, um, yeah. I mean, it it sort of her, her character arc was a little bit of a cliche, but it wasn't done badly, I guess. Yeah, also, no, she has a very good. nice design. Like, I, I love the little like suit she wears, like for, like the suspenders and stuff. It's very cute and adorable. And I was like saying to her, "This is like, why can't women like this exist? Why why can't we have this?" <laughs> Yeah, yeah why can't all women be? Yeah, no, Go. she's just a very cute feminine type, yeah, uh, and like she, uh, uh, and and she's like the ideal housewife essentially. So yeah, I get what Tygon was getting at. Yeah, well, why can't any women be real? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Question yeah. which has been asked many times. Um, yeah, uh, I think that basically covers it. Anything else you guys want to add? Well, um, was, yeah, Outlaw was... Star is a is a cool anime, and you should watch it. Well, I was also gonna add another thing that could probably have is have a prequel with Hilda, because to be honest, like I I do enjoy Hilda as a character. Oh yeah, Hilda's um, pretty fun. It, I think it, in uh, I've heard that in the manga she's there for two thirds of it, but her character apparently is a little bit different. Uh, apparently, she gets obsessed with the uh, get into the ley line herself. So you might check out the manga and see mm. more of Hilda. Uh, the um, manga is very different. I mean, one example is uh, Melfina in, in the manga is a bit more snarky. And yes, and it's very, very edgy. And, well, this, uh, is, this, the, this the, was the nineties. Like this was the this is the generation that boosts like X and shit like that. So you know. Yeah, I mean, I can So I kind of get the feeling that the whole, you know, sweet girl thing is at this time was more of a bishoujo game thing which slowly came into anime at that time because i don't know like when you look at some old anime even from the 80s like the girls are kind of spunky uh mm. they're not uh you know they're not the, like the, the, but that was like the girls in general like you watch like aliens something. or like matt ripley type shit you know i'm like, sorry alan ripley type shit you know that was kind of popular you know like the actual yeah, yeah. woman archetype that was popular during the 80s uh, I, I mean, they're not like, um, you know, uh, the female characters from key visual novels, basically. No. Um, no. Yeah. Um, and, that, that... Yeah, it's, it's not like a clan ad show. And I mean, admittedly, by the time you get to something like clan ad, that's like off to the races with just sheer level of, oh, this is... Oh, cry for me, the anime, big moe eyes, and oh, these characters do nothing wrong. I don't know that that type of stuff is a little too far the other direction for my taste. Uh, I mean, I don't mind yeah. it, but like, you can't have to be in the mood for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 